Relentless, what's going on? I see people are logging in early. I love it. I love it. As you can see, hey, what's going on? My man Poppy in the building. <laughs> but um, guys, as you can see, I still have my phone in the hand. The reason why is because I'm still inviting individuals that are kind of in press on a training as well let them see the culture let them see how we're training our agents let them see that there's additional information and additional help once they actually join our team so take the time right now to grab that cell phone i want to see everybody on the cell phones hand on the cell phones and start texting your team let them know it's time to plug in guys today we have one of our vice president who's been in this industry long enough to just sit here and just share some valuable information so not only do you know that because obviously you're plugged in but your team definitely needs to know that so today is the time that you take to just go and edify this training and make sure that everybody's plugging in all right so again i want to see phones on every in everyone's hands reaching out to their team let them know to plug in because at 10 o'clock we want to have 100 plus people and we want to get started guys we want to respect everybody's time and make sure we maximize our time as well so i've seen some more people joined in a uh, vice president bruno was going on we also have one of our executive sales directors soon to be executive sales director you already guys on the building as well um my man rob was going on i see you right 
Um, we also got Myra Long. Man, guys, man, a ton of respect for Myra. And I'll tell you this before she takes over. You know, she just got off the phone with me, and this is what we talk about commitment. She goes, X, look, I just had this big deal I'm working on, and she'll share that story with you guys. But I'm just leaving right now. Is it okay if I still host, right? But I'm gonna be in the car. Guys, she never said, hey, Xavier, I can't host. I'm gonna be in the car. She said, is it okay if I can still host? I'm just gonna be in the car. I said, Myra, of course, this is why we do what we do because we can work from wherever whenever with whoever right um and still be able to accomplish other commitments so again thank you myra for always coming in thank you for no excuses it's just more of always finding the solution definitely did find a solution you're safe comfortable in the car right now so we're take over obviously guys we still have seven more minutes before this powerful training actually start but like i was saying earlier if you're just logging in i want to see cell phones and hands and the reason why is because I want to make sure everybody is actually reaching out to their team and letting them know, plug in, plug in, plug in, plug in. A well-trained team is a well-paid team. I don't know about you guys, but I definitely want to get paid, right? Um, so come on, Myra, go ahead. Hey, I'm going to go ahead and shut up now, and I'm going to go ahead and let you guys take over. You guys look better anyway, so let's run it. Awesome, let's get it. Can you hear me okay, Xavier? Fabulous. Happy and blessed. Tuesday, ladies and gentlemen, the time is now 9.54. That means you have the next six minutes to invite somebody to this transformational experience we get to take advantage of online this evening. Like Xavier said, I did check with my mentor because you need to understand the people that introduced you to this type of opportunity have not only paved the way, but they've been able to stick it through and overcome all the types of barriers. Yes, ma'am, I'm still here. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome. Again, we have five more minutes until 10 p.m., but I didn't see the numbers up where Team Relentless gets them to and beyond. Go ahead and extend the invitation out to those additional team members. We've had a great deal of enrollment and growth, so I'm pretty sure there's others that have not yes. yet logged in. While you're here, if your line is unmuted, go ahead and shout out your name. Let us know what city and uh, where you're rapping from. Let's say hello to you properly. Myra, make me a co-host. I got you. Also, I am actually currently just a, an attendee. So, Dr. Bogarty, how are you? Blessed Tuesday. Yes, Could you go ahead and designate me as a co host as well as Rob, please? Thank you. And my thank son, you. Please. Thank you. Yes, yes. I, I see that Dr. Bogarty is currently the host right now. Yeah, um, and I got it. I'm making everybody host. Give me a second. You are fabulous. We love you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Oh. Happy, happy, and blessed Tuesday, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Rep your city. Let us know where you're plugging in from. Who's plugged in tonight? Jerica Lando Lake, Florida. What's going on, Jerica? Welcome, boss lady. Who else? Who else wants to shout out their name? Let us know they are connected this evening. Lucinda, check up your mask. Hey, hey, Lucinda. Welcome, welcome. Happy and blessed Tuesday, everyone. If you're just joining in, shout out your name. Let us know what city you're plugging in from this evening. Katrina Stewart. Welcome, welcome, Katrina. We're glad to have you connected tonight. Who else? Xavier, go ahead and throw me back the host. I gave you the host by accident. Christina. Got you, my brother. Hey, Christina. Blessed Tuesday night. Who else wants to go ahead and shout out their name? Let us know they are present this evening. Laura from Vila nice. Park, Texas. Welcome, Laura. Great to have you connected. Who else? From Boston, Prairie, Texas. Hey, hey, that broke up a little bit, but welcome, boss man. We're glad to have you plugged in. Who else wants to try to shout out the name and let us know they're plugged in tonight? Tanya, Thank you, Dallas, Tampa. Texas. Hey, hey, I heard Tampa's in the house, but two boss ladies. Bless y'all both. I didn't get the name, but it's much love. Thanks for plugging in. Who else is plugged in tonight? Sandra from Tampa. Hey, hey, I see. I heard Sandra and I heard I see Terry from Virginia. Welcome, welcome. Thank you. Uh, Becky, Dallas, Texas. No, I don't know. Hey, hey, Texas okay. in the house. Mm -hmm. oh, if you want attendees, ladies and gentlemen, if your line is unmuted, it's because you want to say hello. <laughs> so happy and blessed Tuesday night. Shout out to Nate. Let us know where you're plugged in from tonight. So. You wanted to do over, okay? Alicia, Dallas, Texas. Hey, hey, what's going on, Alicia? Welcome, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Who else? Who else? When you said do over, like where we started back from. 
Welcome, Carrie. Happy and blessed Tuesday night. I don't know. I don't know. I'm asking you what do you want? A do over. Now, uh, Xavier? Or. All right, I'll go ahead and make me a co host as well so we can go ahead and control some of these mics. How's everyone doing? We have Mama yes. as well. Perfect, perfect. Welcome, welcome. We're going to get the wife's out of the car. All right, we are at 57 attendees right now. We've still got a few more numbers to go ahead and climb up. Who else wants to shout out their name and let us know they are plugged in this evening? Crystal and Nitty, Tampa, Florida. Hey, hey, welcome, boss lady. Welcome, welcome. Who else is plugged in tonight? Gee, Boston, Massachusetts. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's get it. Welcome, welcome. Lucia, Florida, Springfield, Massachusetts. Welcome, welcome. I see the numbers climbing, but we are not at max yet. Go ahead and let your team know. Send them out reminder messages that we are going to be live and direct in the next few minutes. Anthony McKinney, Texas. Oh, yeah. Hey, Anthony, bless night to you. Welcome to the Zoom, everyone. Welcome, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. We're at 62 attendees. Go ahead and make sure your team is not missing out. If you had any new agents join you, please send them the reminder messages. You still have time to do so. Who else wishes to shout out their name and let us know that they're plugged in this evening? Ashley from San Antonio. Welcome, Ashley. San Antonio's in the house. Who else? Who else do I get to say hello to? Well, what's the mask? What's going on, boss man? Welcome to the Zoom tonight. Who else? Who else? Becky, Dallas, Texas. Hey, Becky. Last Tuesday night to you, boss lady. Come on, y'all. We only have 67. Who else? Who else wants to shout out their name and say hello? Devin from New Britain, Connecticut. Hey, hey, Devin. Last night to you, sir. Welcome, welcome, everyone. Hey, this is Christy from Yonkers, New York. Hey, Christy. Last night to you, lady. Thanks for plugging in. Who else? Who else? Bruno Florida. Uh, by the way, Myra, congrats on your engagement. And thank you for everything <laughs> you do. Thank you. Thank you so, so much, boss man. Welcome to the Zoom. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Let's see, it's 10 o'clock, but you know, it's 73 of us. We are a nationwide team and a movement spanning across state lines. I need 24 more attendees before we go ahead and get started with the night. Thank you, Trina. I appreciate it. Welcome, welcome, everyone. Who else wants to shout out their name and let us know they're plugged in this evening? <laughs> Yeah. We're at 77 attendees, almost there. I see Sonia plugging in. Welcome, boss lady. What's up, boss lady? It's JB, credit manager. I'm in Sanford. Hey. What's up, team Relentless? Welcome, welcome, JB. Bless my uh, Shout out their name and let us know they're plugged in tonight. What's going on, Walter? Happy and blessed Tuesday night to you. We're at 82, numbers are climbing. Let's get it. Come on now. Myra, I'm going to go ahead and mute all lines, okay? You have to mute yourself again. Awesome, awesome. All right, welcome, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to be getting started momentarily. We have a few more attendees, 87. That's 13 more. We can go ahead. And see that green light to proceed and move forward. Welcome, welcome, everyone. 90. I see those numbers climbing. Let's get it. Come on now. Up, up, up. Nine more attendees, and we go. 1002, ladies and gentlemen. You want to get to this information tonight. And in the meantime, if you're already plugged in, be sure you're ready to take some notes. Class will be in session, and this will be absolutely worth your time. 93 attendees, seven more. Go ahead. Let's get it. Welcome, welcome, everyone. Hey, hey, Saley Alvarez, welcome to the Zoom for this evening. Laura as well, welcome, welcome. I see Danielle plugging in, I appreciate you. Who else, who else? I see 
<laughs> Nereida, welcome, boss lady. Patricia, and it is goal time. I'm going to get right into it, ladies and gentlemen. Happy and blessed Tuesday night to each and every single one of you. My name is Myra Ferreira. If we haven't already met, I am your host for our team Zoom training. I'm an executive sales director based in Tampa, Florida. And as you can see right now, I'm putting into action what it is to having a business you can operate from anywhere. Uh, if you're joining us this evening, be sure you're ready to take some notes. Be sure you're ready to allow yourself to enter into student mode just so you can grow the most. Understand, tonight, it'll be extremely powerful for the success and the growth that you get to create for yourself. And if tonight is the very first time you're plugging into this team training, I want to go ahead and congratulate you for taking that step forward and joining us on the team, as well as giving you a huge welcome on board to this next chapter in your life, where you are in total control of being able to design access to all those things that you may want for yourself and your loved ones. Getting right into the information, Team Relentless is extremely big on being able to celebrate not only success, but also growth. And tonight, funny, I'm in the car this evening, but I do have to share this with y'all. It's because I had an amazing meeting with two individuals I had never met before in person who need what it is that we've got. And by a simple sit down conversation, not only was I able to bridge that connection with offering them a solution, but also being able to expand my reach to creating an impact. You see, they say you die two times in life. Pay mine twice, once in the physical form, Twice is the very last time anybody ever says your name. And I don't know about you all, but I'm looking to live forever. So anybody else that might be looking to live forever, go ahead and say forever in the chat. Let me see who's awake. Let me see who's up. Let me see who's actually participating. But on that note, Team Relentless is huge on what it means to celebrate success. So you are part of a movement now. And in recognizing our top leading agents so far, I'm going to go ahead and highlight the top 10 agents who have actually so far started this month with the highest enrollment of new customers to the Protection Plan membership. Number one spot held by Boss Man, Vice President, Mr. Bruno Floridor. Next, Boss Lady, Natalie Rodriguez, also Vice President. Dr. Arnold Bogarty, another Vice President of ours. Chantel Ramirez. Stephanie Lopez, Sandra Vajas, Kenny Rush, Tameskia Moore, Saley Alvarez, and Yarnell Tolliver. So congratulations to all of you. Go ahead, team. I know you're muted, but shout them out in the chat. Remember, as you celebrate others' success, that'll be the same way. They in the future will celebrate yours. Moving right along, our second list is for the top 10 personal sale producers. Now, this is only the second week of our volume month, but they are setting the tone to achieving great things. The number one spot held by Bruno Floridor. Shout out to you, boss man. Next, Sandra Vajas, Dr. Arnold Bogarty, Raisa Ortero, Natalie Rodriguez, Chantel Ramirez, Stephanie Lopez, Anthony Winters, Saley Alvarez, and Austin Chabernet. So go ahead and Recognize yourselves. Celebrate that success for Team Light It Up in the chat because they're absolutely killing the game. Last but not least, we're moving on to our top 10 recruiters. So those are individuals who maybe they're the ones that invited you tonight, but they're actually opening the door to allowing other people to achieve and strive for the success they want to design for themselves, growing our family across the nation. The number one spot held by Gilberto Leon. Next, Reza Ortero. Bianca Baez. Rosario Salazar, Lakeisha Carriott, Eric Burns, boss man David Marquez, our EVP, Diana Gomez, Brittany Holmes, and Jason Turner. So again, shouting each and every one of you out because you're entering this month, killing the game already, but also creating an impact that expands beyond your own legacy, introducing those who can actually create theirs as well. So... We're going to step into this training mode. So I hope you have your student mindset in play. Be sure to write down some notes. I know this individual that's going to come and bring the heat for you tonight. But understand, the last time he did training, that was on repeat, repeat, repeat. It was such a phenomenal training session, and I know he's only going to bring that and even more in regards to this case. Now, 
I have the privilege of being able to have met him thanks to this opportunity. And he's always been a person to not only wear his heart on his sleeve, his professionalism has been bar none. And he always had in his mindset and in the way he carried himself that vision and that intention and that ultimate goal to help others. So by background, he joined us with an extensive experience and history in the finance industry. And with having been able to be an approved homeowner at the age of 19, I could promise you for myself, I know his finances were a lot better than mine were when I got started. But that being said, he also had the experience of knowing what it was like to turn down some individuals. And unfortunately, at major banks, be the one that had to tell them no for the things that they needed, wanted, and deserved. By way of this opportunity, he was what I like to call a lifeline of recruitment, receiving a call at whatever o'clock in the morning it was, when Mr. Xavier Morero, our senior vice president, just knew he had to reconnect with this gentleman and say, listen, are you ready to get started? Not in those exact words, but I'm sure he'll be excellent at sharing his story. Today, with regards to this program and what he means for the team, is he's been able to achieve the level of vice president. If you don't already know what that means, his very own business is producing a minimum of $100,000 in business volume every 30 days. He has also achieved the level of R&R, which means at that club membership, he has a car payment for his beautiful Mercedes Benz. So he's one of the members of the real life R&R club too, which if you don't know, you'll find out real quick. But he's definitely someone that I look up to. I have a ton of respect for this gentleman. And when he speaks, I understand I allow myself to learn from all he's been able to create and put into place. I won't keep y'all any longer. Let's forget this delay, but please give it up and allow yourself to learn from our vice president, Mr. Rob Santiago. Are you connected, sir, and can you hear me? Yes, yes, Myra, can you hear me? Loud and clear, you got it. Take awesome, it awesome, thank you so much, man. I always, man, every time you edify, I feel like I gotta go back and take notes. She kills it, man. Thank you so much for, for everything that you do, staying consistent. And, and leading by example, showing people that there's no excuses, like leading the call from the car. Uh, top leaders in the company know how many calls, how many meetings we've had to do from that front seat, you know? So shout out to you, Myra. Uh, shout out to the whole Relentless team, man. Thank you guys for allowing me to be here today. Um, I'm always excited when I get to bring training and, uh, you know, bring some value to you guys. It's important to me. You know, it means a lot to me to be up here. I remember being where you are now. You know, uh, maybe new, you know, maybe a little season with our company, maybe here for a while and, and, and having that restart. Um, but I've been in all those positions, you know, watching the leaders and training. And, and that's something that I, I always look back on. So being able to be a part of this training today and talk to you guys a little bit about vision, um, being here now four years, you know, I, this is my fourth year. Uh, I'm, I'm probably like a quarter into my fourth year with the business now. Uh, three and a half years full time with this thing, you know, um, and it wasn't like that in the beginning uh, for the people who are new on here don't really know my story who I am right I'll keep it brief uh, born in Puerto Rico, raised in New York City I came to Florida at a young age 13 14 years old only child single parent. Um, you know, mom is pop, if you guys know what that means. Uh, and, you know, small media family, man, I, I didn't really have too many jobs growing up. My first job was Chick-fil-A. I used to work at uh, I used to detail cars. I went from that to working at Amscot Financial in Florida, you know where that is. Um, and then I worked for Bank of America. So I did finance guys right out of high school, barely getting out of school. Um, I didn't really like studying that much. Big words scared me. <laughs> I was that kid in the back of the class that kept his head down and slept through most of the class because I didn't want to be picked on a read or, or do this or that. So school wasn't the easiest for me, but working hard was like I, I knew I knew I had to work hard from young, 14 years old, I was already paying bills. I don't know if you guys can relate. I was the only man in the house, you know, so my little Chick-fil-A checks was going straight to the rent. Uh, detailing cars was doing that to help my mom grow. But long story short, out of high school, uh, you know, starting in the workforce, finance for 12 years. I've been with this company now three and a half years. And like Myra said, Xavier gave me a call at two o'clock in the morning to get started with this company. And, you know, he had a major vision. Um, you know, a lot of the top leaders that I'm looking at right now on this call, they all know what I'm talking about when they've seen someone with a major vision in their eyes. And I, I just want to give a big shout out, 
you know, to our senior vice president. You put some ones in the chat for him because uh, without his vision, none of us would be here. Um, and, and I'm extremely grateful. I'm honored, you know, to be here and, and talk about this vision with you guys. But there's a couple things that I want to start off with. All right, I'm not going to go too much into my story. I just want to talk about and paint the vision for you guys. There's two things that I wanted to start this thing off with. The first one, if you're not spiritual, I'm sorry, this ain't really for you, but I didn't know you were invited. <laughs> right? So I, I would drop this for you. The first thing, and it's a scripture, right? And it's called, it says here, you have not because you ask not. Right. Um, I don't know where in the Bible that is. I'm new in my spiritual journey where I'm growing, but I caught this one and it caught my attention. Uh, most people don't have the life that they dream of because they don't ask for it. They don't ask God for that life. They don't you know, they, they don't manifest it. They don't they don't have a vision of, uh, of putting that life into play for themselves. So so keep that. If you could write that down. I want you to write these two things. The first one is you have not because you ask not, right? Uh, the more that you ask, the more that he will give, right? Me and Xavier have been having these discussions lately and we had it kind of backwards before. You know, we always thought if we asked for more, we're greedy and it's selfish and we're, well, I don't feel good asking because I don't ask for nothing. But, you know, 30 years plus now, we're thinking about it in the wrong way. And, you know, I feel that's so important. You know, if you guys could agree, man, definitely drop some flames in the chat. You got to ask more. Ask for the life that you want. <laughs> ask for the car that you want, the house that you want to live in, the family that you want to have. You know what I mean? Ask for it and he'll deliver. And the second thing that I wanted to write, um, you have to write down is that. Write it down. Make it plain. Write down the vision. I, my, my now fiance, she'll tell you, like, I write things down. They, I don't know if I'm saying this correctly, right? Don't quote me on it, but they say a, a short pencil is better than a long memory. Write down the goal, write down the plan, write the vision down, right? And I'm going to jump into the training with the number five. There's five things to me personally. Again, this is just me, but if you want to write this down, I would. There's five things, and we're going to go into the five characteristics as well of the leadership but there's five things that you want to level up on this year. Guaranteed, right? This is what's going to help you take your life to a whole nother level. You got to have vision in all five of these all five of these areas, right? The first one is mindset. Guys, if you want to level up in your mindset, you know, drop some capital M's in the chat. Like you want that your mindset has to go on another level. You have to have that vision, your mindset on another level. That's one of the five things that you want to level up this year. Right. The next thing is your health and fitness without your health. Right. You can't you can't produce for your family without being healthy. You can't go out there and, and grow a team and grow a family and support them. Right. So it's important that you guys take care of yourselves. Mental health, physical health is very important. I know there's a lot of leaders aren't here that promote that. Well, congratulations. Keep doing that. Um, it's important to have that health. Right. And that mindset. Um, the next thing is spiritual growth. Right. So we talk mindset growth health and fitness, right, which is in the same category, and now spiritual. Spiritual growth is super important, right? Having your faith high um, is it, something that changed the game for me. Um, and mind you guys, I didn't grow up religious. You know what I mean? Within the last couple of years, uh, this company, my mentors have really helped me go on that path. And it's been such a great journey to just grow in that area as well. Again, for the I just I'm just talking me here. If you don't feel that's one of your categories, it's okay. It's understood. But the next one is family relationship. Look, tell me if you don't agree with me right now. You want to get your mindset to another level. You want to get your body of fitness in another level, right? You want to have your, your spiritual level up. Now your family, your relationship level is growing. You guys see where I'm coming from? And then finances. That's five right there. So write those things down. Mindset, health, spiritual, family, and relationship, right? finances was last for me. Did you guys notice that? Did you guys notice that finances was last for me? Most people would put that first. I put that last for a reason, right? Money isn't everything, but it's up there with oxygen, like Xavier says. <laughs> it's very important. We need it, right? But again, without the right mind in place, the money that you got is not going to be fruitful, right? Without the right health in place, you can't 
you you can't leave. Like you're not gonna be around and enjoy the family, the fruits of your labor, right? You got to think about those things. The spiritual growth as well. Again, the more that you sow, the more it's coming back to you, right? The family and relationship, you want to grow that, and then the finances will come. If you start lining up all of these things, guys, the vision is gonna be clearer for you. So those are the couple things that I wanted to throw out there in the beginning, just to get your mind right for where we're going, because then I, I kind of want to guide you and, and show you a trip down memory lane with me at FES. Can we do that? Can I get some ones in the chat? Can we do that? Can I show, can I share some vision and memories with you guys from when I first got started with this? I'm talking about like first got started, banker, Rob, still going into the bank, right? I see a lot of ones. Okay, cool, because this is going to be a visual training, right? It's all on vision. So I'm going to show you a lot of pictures and I'm going to go off the top with this. Um, but it's important to me that you guys see that five, that number five was important. I talked to you about five areas of level up, right? But now the five characteristics of leadership that you guys should have. I got four here and one obviously being vision, which is most important. It's got its own slide, but independence is one of the first characteristics that you have to have. Guys, we want you as leaders, again, to you you want yourself as a goal to make yourself as an independent as fast as possible from your leadership so you can grow and create more leaders. Guys, that's a huge part of becoming a leader, period. Not just an FES, period. It don't matter what business then you're in. You have to have that, that form of, uh, man, I'm going to be independent. Like when I was going up at Amscot, I was like, yo, I know I'm going to be a manager one day. Some of you guys are thinking about that, your job right now. Like, man, I'm going to be a manager. I'm going to be the one who's running independent, right? You want to actually grow that. Consistency. I'm sure all the leaders are like, yep, consistency is huge. It's a huge part. Of it. If you not, you can't be half one foot in, half one foot out. I'm a credit agent Monday through Wednesday and Thursday through Sunday. No, man, like. And not to be undercover with this, but you have to be consistent with everything you do. I got people who work out here, X, Arnold, you know what I mean? David, a couple other people who be working out. It's the same thing. Tell me if I'm lying. If you inconsistent, you won't grow muscle. You won't get in the shape that you want. Like you got to be consistent. You don't see it on the first month. They can all tell you, anybody who does that, when you first start working out, when you start, start working on something, the first month is usually not where you get your results at. Usually it's not even the second month. It's usually around the third or fourth month where you start to see the results of the good eating and the, and the consistent workout, the consistency in your business. That's why it sucks when us as leaders see people give up in their first 30 days. <laughs> people give up regularly. They give up on relationships, diets. We talk about that all the time on their businesses, on their dreams. Don't give your dreams 30 days. <laughs> the vision got to be beyond that 30 days. It got to be long term. Right. So be consistent throughout that. The next one you see the red button is take action. Take action. I took action when I got called at two o'clock in the morning to get started with this company. I took action when they invited me to the webinar. For the, I mean, for, to the local event for the first time I went. I took action when I got started with this business. I didn't wait for Xavier to tell me to go find people and talk to people. And No, we took action. Action with or without your upline. It has to be done. This is how you're becoming a leader. Independent, taking action, consistency, and all the red stamp. Oh, don't we love this one. <laughs> Problem solving. Please, if there's any other three or uh, those four that we want the most, anybody is developing that skill of problem solving. Guys, I'm telling you, when you call any leader will tell you from that, from a field trainer leadership all the way up to a pinnacle. When you come to your mentor, you come into people with problems and problems and problems without the solution, you're wasting time. You're wasting time. You're going to sit on your mentor's phone for 30 minutes to an hour talking about problems. You're taking the production away from me, taking the production away from you, taking the production away from everybody else. What's the solution? Anytime I come, honestly, I, I got to correct what I just said. Ex will tell me. I don't come to Xavier with problems. I don't come to Alfred or, or, or David or Arnold or any of the Razor with issues. I, tell, I, I come to them with the solution already, and, and, and I tell them the solution first about the problem I'm going to tell you that we already had. Like, we had an issue, X, but the solution to that issue is this is what I did. 
And if I did wrong at that point, he'll coach you, will coach you, but come with a solution, at least two to three of them. All right. Can you write that down? That's a good one. At least two to three separate solutions of what this could be. I remember Arnold having this conversation a long time ago. Excellent. We talk about a ripple effect, right? How this can affect this or how it can affect this if we affect this, if this decision is made. So, guys, it's important to learn that skill and leadership in this business because guess what? A lot of you let very, very, very small problems stop your money. A lot of you guys let very minimal problems within your organization, within outer organization, stop you growing your vision for you and your family. Tell me I'm not lying. You spent an hour plus about the problems that it ruined your whole day. Your productivity is down. No solution. Guys, that's not leadership. You have to have these four things. Very important. Okay, you got, are you guys following me? Good info so far? Right? <laughs> the next one is vision. Super important. The most important one is vision. Without this, you're not going nowhere. You literally not moving nowhere at all, right? What's the definition of vision? Guys, y'all can Google this. That's what I did, <laughs> right? You Google it. What's the definition of vision? The ability to think about or plan the future with imagination or wisdom. I need y'all to write that down. I need y'all to have that somewhere look look at my vision board yeah can i see it look what does it say vision right there that was before this training write that down the ability to think about or plan the future imagine wisdom or wisdom guys i'm talking about vision on everything in them five things that i'm telling you about level up right the only thing worse than being blind is having sight but no vision what does that mean to you Oof. <laughs> what does that mean to you think about it What's worse than being blind? No vision. How many people are walking around just, I wish I had a walking dead picture. I would have put it up right now. <laughs> just don't know where they're going. They're just running into stuff. You got eyes open and you just, you're not moving in, in no direction. You got to have a vision. You got to have a plan. You got to write this thing down. And you got to ask for what you want, right? All of these are key success tips, guys. Paint it out. Paint your vision. Write it out. Vision boards are huge. If you haven't had a vision board party, I remember, you know what's crazy? I'm going back now. I remember when, when people would tell me that. Rob, have you done a vision board? I'm like, bro, what's a, what is that going to do? Like, what's, the vision board, what's the vision board going to do for me? Like, I'm going to sit down and cut out. I got to pay money for magazines to cut them out and then put them up on my board. I don't even got the money for a magazine. I'm going to have to Google these pictures and figure it out. It, it didn't click to me manifestation, the, the seeker, right? You guys watch the seeker, all this speaking life and death with the tongue. It, none of that, it, it, it didn't exist to me. I didn't believe in that. And that's probably some of you guys right now, when you hear the leadership say, man, have you created a vision board for yourself? Where do you see your title? Where do you see your family? Where do you see yourself going? What's your, where your dreams at? And you're like, man, I just, I'm just, no vision, no dream, just, go, just going. You don't know where you want to be at, but you got to paint this up. Paint it out for yourself. Paint it out for your family, for your team, which is family. Your team, my team is my family. They know that. You know, uh, and your ages, your clients, your potentials. You got to paint the vision for everybody. When I started this business, it was with me first. I said, I'm going to be the one who's going to bring my family out the gutter. I'm going to be the one who's going to carry all of them on my back, five, six, five, seven on a good day. I got a lot. Of, I'm going to carry all of them on my back if I got to. There's nothing stopping me. For my family, the vision that I painted to retire my moms, my aunts, all the single, everybody, my family ain't massive. I come from a Hispanic family that's pretty small. It was unusual. But all of them, my, my vision is not about me. It's about retiring my mom's moms, my aunts, all of them. They all grew up in Section A in the, in the projects. They, they grew up in, in New York, living a struggle my whole life. If I got the opportunity to put them in living and, and take care of everything financially, that's what's happening. That's a vision that I have in my mind on a regular. People ask me why I go so hard because it's not for me. I already accomplished everything that I wanted to accomplish. I bought a house at a young age. I, you know what I mean? I, I was able to travel. I, would, I ate at great restaurants. I drive the nice car. Like My family didn't experience none of that. It's their turn. Because of them, I'm where I'm at. Because of every struggle with my mom, 
needed my aunt to watch me and somebody needed to take me to school and they needed to pick me up early because she needed to work. All of those things made me who I am today. They deserve it. Nobody's going to tell me otherwise. I don't care if we got a good relationship or not. My father, I don't talk to, but I retire him too. If that don't show you, I forgive. That's how it is. The family, huge, the team. I paid the vision for my team and their families. You got to. And especially for the clients and agents when they get started, you got to paint the vision for a client when they get on the phone with you. When you get on a webinar with you. When you got an agent potential, you got to you gotta draw it out for them because nobody's drawing it out for them. <laughs> you guys feeling me? Nobody's drawing it out. Nobody ever took the time to say, you know what? Uh, Jay or, 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 yo, this is what we need you to do. In the next four to six months, the vision of you is going to be different. Your score is going to be up. You're going to be doing this. You're going to be living a better. You got to paint the vision for them. A lot of you guys ain't painting the vision for your clients. They ain't signing up. You're not paying the vision for your agents. They're not growing. You got to paint this thing out. Even when you're at the bottom, that's where your paint is the thickest. When you're at the bottom, that's when your paintbrush is the thickest. That's when the masterpiece comes out. Tell me anybody who ever been at the bottom and they're back against the wall, your vision ain't come to your head. Guys, when I was at the, when my mom was going through cancer, my, I, I lost my, the rights to my daughter. I'm going through court. I was doing, that's when my vision was the clearest. I was going through, it was a dark time, but there was a light, man, that I was like, one day, one day, my kids are going to be good. My mom's going to be good. I'm going to have a family, a house, uh, all the things that I had at one point and lost and gave up. Sometimes you got to rewire that vision, right? It changes sometimes. But look, I want to I wanna send, show you guys some pictures, right? Let's have some fun with this real quick. I'm going to bring you guys into, uh, I'm sweating, man. I'm getting excited. Uh, I don't know about y'all. But look, this is this is Rob Santiago, 2017. I even put the day on there so y'all can see it's real. Me holding my head at the bank. I was mad that day. I was so mad. They made me come in at like 7 in the morning early for a meeting. They never had it. I was like, ah. Oh. I think I had just met X and them not too long ago, maybe within October, November time. Been to a local event and all that. But what I mean by <laughs> Christmas Tyler, I even cursed. I was I was bad. This is this is a whole other level for me. But these pictures mean a lot. Me and X were laughing because that was his house. That was Xavier's house to my right. There was no frames on the walls. There was not like when I'll tell y'all, man, when we started this thing, like it was just bare. Like you see that little table in the back? That little table made us. That's where the uh hundred or a million a month came for SBP. X know what I'm talking about. That table, the work that we put on that sofa, that table, you see everything was matte. I don't know if y'all see the vision in this picture, right? Y'all see the green screen. Y'all see a couple lights, a couple plastic chairs. Bro, there weren't even no, no uh, pots and pans in this house at the time. This is the lab. This is the original Relentless Lab. I mean, right when Xavier came out of his parents' house. Like, I remember when he moved out of his parents' house. He had a vision. Yo, I'm, I'm going to get my son out of this. I'm going to get myself out of this. And this was the first step. And I was, you know, honored enough to be a part of that. I remember, you know what I mean? And we were able to move in the bare minimum that was necessary. A lot of cereal bowl action going down in this house, right? A lot of, a lot of good times. But I, I just wanted to paint that picture back in 2017, 18, when I was working that job. I was going through that hardship, that dark time. Every day was like this for me. Can someone relate? Like you're probably going through that right now. But what did I do? Throughout that hardship and that darkness, I still work my business. They gave me an opportunity that I, I, I could see the vision that he had planned. I could see the vision that the leadership had planted. It made sense. We got 20,000 representatives with a whole country full of people with bad credit. How do you not see the vision with that? We're, in the, we're at the bottom of the company, the foundation. Right. And being growing up from New York, I've seen a lot of foundations grow to some pretty high skyscrapers. Right. Usually when they started the foundation, you don't notice that part. But once they start working past that foundation, the skyscraper grows really quick. So, guys, this foundation is where we started growing. Some small events. This was Bobby Kim as like an executive sales director or RSD at the time to the left. These are two separate events, two different nights. There was only three rows of people. 
Three rows of people. Look at that beautiful carpet. <laughs> Look at those the non-matching chairs. I don't know what that picture was in the back. That that carpet right there closed all the deals. I'm just like, you know, if y'all don't got that carpet, that's why y'all not winning. But that's why we started, right? That's where we was at. A little banner. If I'm not mistaken, there was a TV right behind Bobby. Like when I'm telling you vision, when I came into this room, I'm like, man, that's like 20 some people in here. Like these guys talking about making this kind of money and growing. I see it. Happen. Guess what? The next event next week, look what happened. How many rows now? Four or five? I don't know if y'all see a, a young VG Quinones in the back over there, sales director. Uh, in the picture, Courtney and Gino is over here. If y'all don't see them, I think they're like new agent, field trainer, senior uh, I don't know, senior field trainer. At that, at, back then, man, I remember you guys. So again, huge shout out to all of the individuals that was with us in the beginning. Uh, these are some older pictures. Again, the vision was being painted. I'm flowing you guys through, right? Again, coming from work, working with X a little bit, seeing a local event, right? The vision is being painted. Guess what? Then I went to my first major event. Major events are so important, so important. This was my gray Honda that got me from A to Z and back to A <laughs> on low gas, right? You see VG, me, X. This is the story that we tell you all guys that we, we drove out to Fort Lauderdale and stood in a hotel with no heat, like people, it was crazy, man. It was, it was not, we barely had any money. Like it was, and me sitting all the way in the back of the room. I think that's Ashton up there in the front. And this person right here holding the camera, I wish I had a better picture and I knew who he was at that time. That was Alfred. That was Alfred sitting next to me. I was like, this, this is the kid that they're all talking about right here. This little young cat. Man, I see him wiggling his fingers on that phone. I'm like, I don't know what he's doing, but I know he's making money here. And he's, and he's sitting in the back. I didn't know. He just sat right next to me. Paying the vision. Guys, when I was here, I'm driving my, my new mentor. I just met him <laughs> a couple months ago. You know what I mean? Just met VG. We driving four hours to go to a training. Your vision got to be big. Your vision got to be big. I barely had gas money. I didn't want to drive from St. Pete to Tampa. What are you talking about, Fort Lauderdale, X? <laughs> what, do you, what do you mean we got to drive out here and listen to some people? Where are we going to stay at? With what money? We're going to figure it out. That's how we always did it. We're going to figure it out. We're not going to go hungry. We're going to figure it out, right? Sitting in the back of the room, man, I remember that. I rem that was my first event. I think I was a field trainer at the time. You know, that was my Bank of America tie. Don't hate me. And this is this is a big event. I know Razor's on here. I know she's watching. This is when Xavier said, Rob, guess what? Now we're going to travel across the country and start opening up markets outside of Florida. Big vision. There was nobody in the room. We, we took a flight. I don't got the picture with me, Roberto, and him. Massachusetts. Hit it. Snowstorm hit. Razor was like, yeah, I got to get down here because I'm going to stack this thing. You know who was in the, the exactly who were in the pictures were who were there. <laughs> Everybody was, there was a lot more empty seats than filled seats. There was actually only two people that showed up. And we closed one, so shout out to us because we were still 50% closing rate, right, which is good. But can you guys see my face? I was not the happiest at that moment. <laughs> I was like, yo, you know how much money I spent to come out here? Mind you, race is not in my downline. Nobody's. I just come out for the experience to just get into the trenches. I'm telling y'all, man, the sacrifices. This is what molded us into what we are right now. Showing up in a room that you paid for a hotel, you paid for a fight, you paid for everything, and you got there, nobody showed up. You know how discouraging Razor felt at that moment, but happy at the same time? Because guess what? She closed her first customer. That was the start of something major. I think she was behind me in this picture, probably laughing. I don't know. But, guys, another thing I wanted to talk about in this transition is the 90 days. Like, you guys have to really start painting the vision of 90 day runs for your team consistently network marketing. What I've learned since I've been in this industry is a consistency built the momentum into 90 day timeframes Four 90 day runs a year. And guys, what, what's that going to do for you? What happens after 90 days when a client and an agent is enrolled for that much time, what doesn't come out your checking account? I know you I don't want to say the, the curse word in our industry. 
<laughs> right? Retra the retraction. Right now, if you got an agent that comes in and you don't paint the vision for them to give them a plan of action for the next 90 days, you're giving your client a plan of action for the next 90 plus days. What is that going to do for you? You set the right expectation. Your retention is going to go down. And you're painting a vision for your team that's like, look, this month we're going to build into next month we're going to build into this five week we're going to slaughter it. If you're not painting the vision in 90 day time frames, you're missing out. If you're doing 30 days, that's why people are dropping out your organization as fast as they come in. That's why they're going inactive as fast as they come in. You're not painting the vision for them. Give them a 90 day challenge when they come in. What's their challenge? Senior field trainer, sales director, what it is. You can't, you, yo, me and you, we rocking out. The team, we rocking out for the next 90. Everybody's in synchrony. Everybody's in unity. Beautiful guys, leaders, tell them in the chat. When the team moves in unity in the 90-day run, incredible things happen. 25,000 becomes 100,000. 100,000 becomes half a million. Half a million becomes a million. And why I pray for this month that a million turns to 2.5, right? That's where we're going. That's what this next four weeks is about. That's why we talked to you about, about the vision because we talked about SVP when we were sales director, RSD, new agent. A million a month was a dream then. The vision was painted then. So if we painted that vision three and a half years ago, we repaint it. It's a new vision now. Pinnacle's coming in two, less than two years. Why? Because we already know what it takes to have the vision, go forward with it, and now paint the vision for our team so they can see it too. Guys, 90-day runs are huge. You have to make it important. Paint it out for them. This is the big day, the end of the five week. This is where everything is going to happen. Everything in the middle is just practice. You planting seeds and you just building momentum until the big Super Bowl. That five-week Super Bowl comes, ooh, everybody, even inactive people are coming to light. When you got everybody on the same vision, I put a post out not too long ago saying it was me and Ray's and four eyes on the same target you can't miss. How many eyes in a relentless organization do we have at the same target? How can we miss in that 90 days when everybody's shooting at the same spot? Guys, together we do more. Training, development, skills, all of this stuff is important within that 90 days. No matter where your position is, where you're resetting, major events. That's why I was talking with you guys today about vision, 90-day runs, and major events. They all fall into play because because of major events, the vision is painted even bigger. Guys, there's so many leaders right now that hit RSD and above, never been to a major event. There's a lot of people right now that haven't been to a major event because we didn't have a major event in the last 18 plus months. Y'all haven't even been to a local event. Like, y'all don't even know the energy that comes out these rooms, man. If y'all think we hyped on a webinar, <laughs> it gets crazy. So understand that too. Put that into consideration that you haven't been, you haven't even seen the vision yet. Wait until you walk into one of these things. If you guys are ready to go to Atlanta to this major event, put some ones in the chat. I want to see who's committed. This is the first Major event that's had. Oh, I see a lot of ones, boy. Relentless gonna be thick. I'm so mad. I'm a, I'm cursing. I'm re-recording this, right? I'm cursing my cousin out because he decided to get married that weekend, and I gotta go over there. So, but I'm extremely proud of my team. I want to give them a huge shout out because I'm not going, and I told them that I was not going. They made an extra effort to put more people in the seats. I want to give a huge shout out to Brittany, to Bianca. They got, their own, they got their own houses in Atlanta with their teams right now. Huge. And even, even more huge that the fact that their mentor is not going to be in the building and they making that happen. So shout out to my whole team that's going to be out there. Shout out to everybody that put a one in the plant. And I know it, it could be your last money that you invested to go to these events because we've been there. Like, I, I know it's not easy. You're talking about traveling in a pandemic. I got to pay money to go learn from it. Yeah, it's an investment. All every single event that we went to, we had to invest. Guys, when I'm telling you that these were the best investments we ever did, this was another Miami trip. You know, you see the top leaders at the time. You got Jabari, you got Rice over here, Xavier. 
<laughs> you got Alfred. I don't know he's gonna be mad at me, but that's why he got the rich man belly shirt. All right, we were talking about that day, <laughs> right? He got Chris Brown in here. That was me in the back, just showing the size of the room. Like, man, look how this thing has grown. Yeah, did y'all see the vision in the beginning? Y'all remember the three row picture? How many rows is in this one? <laughs> a lot more than three. You talk about duplication, right? So let's keep flowing through this, man. Relentless. First of all, shout out to all of y'all who, who went to uh, what was the most powerful women's event. Everybody who tuned into that, fellas and ladies, congratulations. That's huge, right? The people who are part of the accelerator who have added to that and the people who already purchased their GoPro tickets and their convention tickets that were available. Guys, I'm praying to God that they open the floodgates of convention, boy, because 2021's picture ain't going to fit us all. <laughs> it ain't going to fit us all. It's a great problem to have because in 2018, we went six strong. Six, you got Xavier with the blue with the blue suit that we got in mass. I remember no tax. I remember that. VG, Yvonne was in the building, right? Uh, Money Ant, Tay, and myself, bow tie. We was bow tie thugging it out there. Six of us sitting in the back of the convention, watching all the VPs, all these people getting awards and all this stuff. We're like, man. I know we're in the back right now, but in a couple of years, we're going to run this place. In a couple of years, there's going to be a lot of relentless agents in this organization at this convention. And then 2019, what we did, we came in, we stacked with some more, raising her team, our new everybody's team. We started, that's not, that's not even everybody. I, I think we just missed some people in the picture. And then 2020, look what we were able to do. 2020 vision, right? The hat, and we all got the hats on. Uh, it was awesome. And then, of course, the pandemic and everything happened. But, guys, when I'm telling you, everything big starts small. Everything big starts small. Right now, you only got two, three, four agents in your organization. One agent in your organization. Maybe you are your organization. Everything big starts small. Again, huge shout out to our leaders that continue. This vision was passed on. I want to I wanna tell you that. It's like, well, what's the one they raised and they, they passed the baton? The vision is passed on from leader to leader. When you drop the baton, we lose the race. Keep passing the vision. Keep passing the vision on to your teams and to your downlines. Again, that was convention. GoPro is another major event. Right now, they're having it virtual this year. I had the honor to be able to go to the, the 10th annual, see Eric Thomas, see uh, Grant Cardone showed up, to see our mentor, uh, Alfred Nixon right over here received his million dollar award in the industry. Guys, vision. Why you think me, X, Razor, everybody who went there, why we went there? Vision. We going to be on that same stage. Shoot, shout out to X here on the corner. Like a lot of us are going to be on the stage accepting the same type of award. You got to visualize that. You see me holding my hand up? I'm like, yo, my whole squad, my team is going to fill a room like this. That was the confidence I got in this picture. Like, yo, I'm going to have a team of 100,000 people that they just going to have to, they ha they're going to have to give us our own room over here to do whatever event they got. Big vision. We're going to be on that stage. Not only me, but my leaders too. All of them. I got the chance to meet uh, Frazier Brooks. I love him, right? If you don't follow Frazier, follow him. Social media genius. I love that guy. Um, got a chance to think, well, look what this major events do. Guess what? Now I'm building a relationship with Frazier. I don't send him that picture like 50 times. I'm like, yo, you remember me? You remember me? I'm going to see you next year, bro. I'm going to be out there. Get ready. I'm going to be in the VIP. I can't wait for the nuggets. Now he know who Rob Santiago is. And I always throw the relentless thing in there. I got a recording of that, by the way, if y'all don't believe me. Big vision. Keep going with it. Manifest. Who wants to hit R&R? &R? Put some R&Rs in the chat. Who wants to hit r, r I need y'all to do something sweet for me. You want to do something sweet for your social media? I need all of y'all to pull up to the dealership and go see the car that you want to get. Go. You see this picture? This is Rob May 10th, 2019, in the St. Pete Mercedes dealer with no money in his pocket, a Honda key, and a big vision. I wish you could see the rest of that post. It said, my company is better than yours. Because I know in the next year, next two in the next year, I'm gonna be driving one of these. 
guys, I'm telling you, I laugh about it because I remember when I took that picture. I remember how I felt. I remember looking at all those cars and I said, my mentors told me if you don't come and see it and feel it, it ain't real. Some of y'all are scared to go to the dealership. <laughs> go to the dealer. Put it on your social media and tag me. No, nah, you don't got to tag me. But if you want to, it's cool, right? But go out there and do it. Think about it. Go see the car. Go sit in it. Manifest. Have a vision. Because guess what, guys? It happened. And y'all know my story. Y'all know I was an RSD for 28 months. I was an RSD there. I was an RSD since 2018. But there were certain things that I did that helped me get out of that title and level up. Build my vision. Go into the dealer. See myself in the cars. Talk to the salesman. Find out what the rates are. What's the price like? What's the payments like? All of that. And guess what? r and came because I asked for it. I wrote my letter. You guys know the letter of God that we're talking about. And I asked for it. And I worked for it. Again, don't, don't let that twist you. You don't have because you don't ask, but you it's because you got to work too. We put major work behind that. I was moving like an r, r member like with my Honda. When I was driving my Honda, I could see the Mercedes emblem. That's the type of vision that y'all got to have. Big time. Right. So again, huge. This is a team accomplishment. So again, give it back to my team and God's plan. That's what we call ourselves, man. And and as that is exactly what happened because in, we had a miraculous 90 day run. Imagine being stuck at an RSD position for 28 months and then having a miraculous 90 day run. Going from 25 to 50 in one month. Who could picture that? 50 to R&R &R in the next month. R and R the vice president on the next month's back to back to back to back blessings after all this time of struggle. You don't know how it's gonna be. Right now, there's a lot of you that's ready to give up. There's a lot of you right now that want to throw in the towel. The slow season's coming. Blah. Don't want to hear it. You gotta keep pushing through, keep having the vision high. This is a picture that I didn't see, right? This is where me and Razor really met. The, one of the five people that were in here. So obviously now, you know, I'm extremely grateful for our mentor. We had a chance to go check out a flight, you know, now engage, new homeowner, all, all of these things that just happened to us in the last six months. Honestly, these two have been like last month, I think, just so a couple of weeks ago. But these are all things that I asked for. These are all things that I visioned at one time. When I was going through the heartbreak of a relationship, I was visioning a good woman that I have now. When I when I sold my house and I and I slept on my mother's futon on the floor for eight months, I visioned the new home that we're building right now. When my car got repoed and I was carless for six months as an ESD or as an RSD struggling, think about being an RSD 28 months and your car get repoed. Now, r and R club, I, I visioned that. I asked for it, right? And again, I'm super grateful. I want to trans transition over to this gentleman so he can end this training with that. But because of him, that's why we're here. Because of him, I, I, I'm, I'm getting married. I got a new home. You know what I mean? I'm super grateful. We laugh about it. This is a picture that we, <laughs> me and X snuck into a room in convention. I was like, yo, we're going to take some pictures in here. I got my feet on the table like it was mine. Like, like yo, y'all have no idea. Everybody was in the hallway a lot. We was like, yo, we're sneaking in. Let's take some. I think Anthony Kelly took this picture. And we're laughing like, yo, watch. We laughing right now. People probably laughing at us right now. But later on, it's going to be real. Then I think this is when he hit level two, like the 10,000. Like, I don't remember what this was, but we were just clowning. You know you can't put that on social media. So there's like personal pictures. And then the first time, you know, my brother been able to take me on a jet. So uh, it, this is a, a vision that we had a long time ago. You know what I mean? And I'm just, and, and I told y'all this on my last training, if I'm not mistaken, always pray for your upline. Uh, pray for their success. Pray for their, their safety, their, like, you know what I mean? Everything, everything, their health, their, their family, their relationships. Because everything that they get through and accomplish just paves the way for you and yours.
So don't think about them falling so you can overcome that. That's the wrong way to go about things. So, you know, I'm grateful to call him a brother, a senior vice president now uh, with our company doing over a million dollars in business a month. Uh, and when we used to have those conversations at 25,000 a month, um, he's going to take over the rest of this call and drop some more fire for you guys. If, if I was able to deliver some value, please put some flames in the chat for myself. And then I just want to hand it over to my brother, Xavier. If you hear me, my bro, it's all on you. Wow, 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 bro. You got me super excited over here. I know earlier today you was at the crib. We was talking about the training. We kind of went through some of these slides, but man, man, man. The energy, the information, the man, I'm aware you got me hyped. I was like, man, I can't wait till he brings me on. Like I'm over here itching, trying to look calm, but inside I was just like, I'm ready to take over. So thank you again, Rob, Vice President. You already know you, my brother. Congratulations, all your success, your accomplishment on the new family, on the new home, on the new everything, man. Just thank you, thank you, thank you. And thank you for always stepping up, man. Always coming through last minute. And, Never giving excuses, man. Shout out to you. You've been working the last 10 days at that home. Night, morning, all the way to night. I see it. I've been there. I got a scar from it, right? Um, if you guys don't know, Rob's house gave me six. Rob's and Ray's house gave me six staples. Um, but it's all love, right? Um, but again, Rob, thank you so much. But guys, look, let me continue with, on what Rob is talking about. Man, when we talk about vision, I was telling Rob, I said, Rob, that's the most important factor. I don't care what it is. Without vision, I don't care how much skills you have, you're not going to go anywhere, period. So just remember that. And I'm going to write that. I'm gonna, I'm, I want you guys to write down a couple of things because obviously I'm spiritual work as well. And, you know, I'm getting better at like, like Rob reading the Bible. And there's a couple of things that I picked up when I was reading and we was talking about vision, right? Um, but before I start with that quote, I wanna tell you guys a couple of things, right? To be successful, you want to be clear in life, right? So understand that, to be successful, you want to be clear in life. To be clear, you need a vision. Without vision, you're not living. Please remember that, right? Without vision, you're not living. So the richest man that ever walked the earth or ever lived is King Solomon. King Solomon said, where there is no vision, the people will perish. Guys, understand what that means. See, I'll give you a good example of what I mean, right? When I met with David Marquez, our executive vice president at this point, see, David met with me because David had a goal. David just had to get approved for the home that he had promised his wife, right? That was his goal, that was his vision. That's where he came in. When I sat down with David and I told David, David, that's not my vision. My vision is not to sign you up as a customer just so you can go get the home. I know you will, and I will help you accomplish that goal because the program is going to do that for you. But I have a vision with you. See, I have a vision that because you know so many people that you can impact so many lives. But not only that, how much money can we make? How much money... Can we really touch and what lives can we really live? Because we always talked about impacting people. We always talked about living life on our own terms. We always talked about living good and making good money. And I'm telling you, this right here is the vehicle. So I had to paint that picture for David, right? David, thank God, seen the picture. He seen the vision that I had. And he said, you know what, X, let's go ahead. And look where he's at right now. See, me and David spoke about what's happening today almost four years ago at a table at a restaurant called The Grind, right? And then when I say that people where there is no vision, people will perish. I said that because if I never had that vision and I never brought in David, then we would have never met Arnold. We would have never met Bruno. We would have never met Jackie. We would have never met Yoerika. We would have never met so many powerful leaders that are part of Relentless today if that vision wasn't there. People would have perished. Does that make sense? Please let me know if that makes sense, right? And then just understand this, right? Clarity is just a starting point. It's like a jump off, right? You want to make sure that you... When we talked about last year, we saw about vision 2020, right? We had a very, very clear vision. But when we talk about clarity, right, that's basically the jump off for you to the self-development, the transformation that you're about to go into. 
right? When Rob was talking, he brought a couple things and it was crazy because I would get excited. But some of the things he said, I was kind of getting emotional because I remember when I told him while I was living with my parents that I had a vision that my son would never live like this ever again. I remember when I was telling him that I had a vision that my son will get everything that he ever wants in life. I remember telling Rob that I had a vision that because my parents let me stay at their house because I was homeless, that one day I will take over their entire bills. That one day I will retire them. That one day money will never be an issue to them. That was the vision. When I spoke with my leaders and we went to Acropolis, when we went on that VP run, it was a vision. Everybody seen it. Remember, you can never hit a target you can't see. With the vision, we always see the target. And that's why we always hit the target, right? So very, very important for you just to understand how important vision is. Guys, I tell you this, Rob said it earlier, with the vision, he understands why he has to get up every single morning and work. The man doesn't need an alarm clock. His ambition, his vision wakes him up. It's the same with a lot of top leaders. I guarantee you, all your top leaders don't have an alarm clock and between seven or eight, they're already up, naturally. Right? But again, it all started with that vision, right? So what you want to do is you want to ask yourself, what is what does success means to you? But when I say what it means to you, what does it really look, look like? What does success really look like? See, success to me really looked like when I was able to impact other people. It wasn't about my life. I already knew the vision was God put me on this planet to impact so many other people in a positive way. That was my vision. Then, of course, during the process, yeah, you can ask for better things. I told Rob, I told Razor, one day I promise you I will get you guys on the jet. It was an honor to me. See, I don't know about y'all, but it's an honor to me when I have the privilege to allow someone to experience something for the first time based off of my hard work or based off of the vision that I once seen before. Who can relate? Right? It's an honor to me. That's what makes me feel good to be able to be like, yo, you know what? Because of the vision that I have, everyone in my team has a whole different mindset. Everyone on my team can say, you know what? Forget a nine to five, because if we all work hard enough, we're all going to shine. Guys, so you have to understand when we talk about this, we're not just saying this to say it. This is something you have to do. A vision means you have a target. You will never hit a target you can't see. Make sure your vision is clear. Make sure the target is there. Just take action and get it done, period. Again, guys, thank you so much for plugging in today. Rob, man, thank you for amazing training. I'm still hyped up off of it. Man, I'm going back to like, yo, what is my new vision, right? Like how you said, we have already accomplished so many things that we spoke about as leaders and as a team. So what is the new vision? How can we get everybody else a relentless all the way to the top? But understand, guys, not just because we have the vision means you're going to get there. We have the vision, but you got to take the actions. With that being said, guys, have a good night. Again, thank you, Rob. Thank you, Myra. I appreciate you. Leadership, appreciate you. Every brand new agent, welcome to Team Relentless. We're nothing but family. We're about principles and morals. The money just comes after that. Everybody else, thank you for being fully committed. Let's get it. We still got four weeks to finish this month off strong. And I'm telling you, we said it before, whatever you do this month, it's what's going to set the tone for the rest of the year. So go ahead and get out your comfort zone because we're in the business of chasing your fears. We become fearless, right? Just chase your fears. Once you go ahead and you face your fears, you become more valuable. I guarantee you, you become more powerful. You become where people really want to be around you because they're like, look, they're out there doing that. That's what I want to do. But again, just become fearless, all right? This is Team Relentless. I see you guys at the top of front of the top. Let's go. Get it. Good night. Good night. Good night, everybody.